So I don't know if you can really see this or not, but you take this end of the string and you stick it in this hole right here, and then it it's going to come through the other side a little bit. You know, like an eighth, like an eighth of an inch, and then you're going to wind it over on the opposite side, so toward the high strings or the E strings, until it passes by where the string goes through the hole in the peg, and then you cross it back over again, and then you wind it gradually this way. Like I said, if it gets too far over here, you can pull it, like pull the peg back through and push all the strings back up there. And just kind of hold tension on it this way. Get it in the nut slot. Make sure it's on the bridge slot. Keeping tension on the peg because it's not pushed in there yet. And then tighten it up a little bit. Pushing the peg in to hold it in place. Okay, there you go. Don't do that. It didn't break, but obviously I didn't get this under here enough. It goes in there. Sometimes you got to pull that ball up there. And then back to this end of the thing. Now tighten it up a little bit. Just make sure it doesn't come loose. Keep some tension on it. You can worry about the tinning in a second. Don't forget on that bridge this side right here is straight up and down not not curved inward or outward it should be straight up and down you can eyeball it and then it looks like this is bent over but it's actually carved at, on a curvature toward the back. The back side's flat. The front side is curved. I don't know if there's enough light to even see in there, but yeah, it looks fairly neat when you finish the job. On the G string, I couldn't really stick, couldn't get the string to stay an eighth of an inch out the other side of the peg. But I have found, of course, I keep finding things every day, so this could change, but I found as long as the string sort of wound around it, even if it only goes to the edge of that hole in the peg, it, it shouldn't come out at all. It should be fine. If you buy a violin, check the spacing between the strings, because I bought this violin as a novice, and the spacing here, even though it was an expensive violin, the spacing was not even. In fact, it was way off. When I discovered it, I felt like a complete idiot. Because who would buy a violin when this, the strings aren't even evenly spaced? Of course, same thing goes for the bridge. They need to be evenly spaced on the bridge in some fashion or another. You don't have to be an expert, but they should at least be evenly spaced, right? Two things that weren't on this violin, I had to pay professional to put a new nut on there. And of course, the bridge. The bridge is highly important to the sound of the violin. In my opinion, the most important thing.
So anyway, basically it's done. I just keep tuning, keep tuning until the strings settle down, which could be an hour from now, or fundamentally a day from now, really, before they settle down. If you get steel strings, which are cheaper, it's near impossible to tune the things with the pegs. You got to have fine tuners on every string, which most bluegrass players do anyway. And on my other two violins, I also do have it. Just have to be pretty picky to put them, not put them on there, but it does make a difference in the sound. Okay, back to tuning. Then if you have a phone app, you can tune it, auto-tune. Use the fine tuner on that one, then still can't get too particular in the beginning because they're still going to stretch quite a bit. That's sharp, but just leave it sharp. Know what I mean? Leave it sharp. It'll come back down. If you're impatient, you can kind of stretch it. Let's see if you stretch it enough, you can get it right on there. violin that the D string, for some reason the D string doesn't sound as alive as the other ones, especially this G note. fighting this thing, but, whoops, helps if you turn the right peg. <laughs> mm. If you're a bluegrass person and you, you use these fine tuners, you don't really move the pegs, and so a lot of times they get stuck in place, and then if you try to tune with the pegs, it's a little bit difficult. If you don't use fine tuners, you, turn, you use the pegs all the time. And so if they get sticky, you can put a little bit of soap on them, little tiny, little tiny bit. Just dry, just a bar of soap, wipe it on there, little tiny bit, then wipe it off and that'll make it uh, slide a little bit more. Of course, you don't want it too much because then it won't hold. If it's too much, somebody told me to put talcum powder on there. I've never really got to that point yet. 
I mean, if it's too loose, you put talcum powder on her. I don't know about that. I haven't been there yet. <laughs> Sounds good with new strings. You'll love new strings. Don't waste a whole lot of money trying to find good strings because half of the problem, if you got a bad sound, half the problem is with the violin. There's going to be some problem with the violin. Get into that. It's a long, long subject of which I'm not an expert, but the Pro Arte. Is almost the exact same thing as the dominance, which are about almost twice as expensive, not really quite, but. And they last, uh, you know, it depends on how much you practice, a couple months, a couple two months, a couple two, three months, year if you don't practice, I suppose, one month. If you practice a lot, my last set, actually the dominance went bad before these Pro Artes did. My last Pro Artes lasted a long time. I don't know if they've changed. Well, it looks like this is a nylon core. Hmm, that's interesting. I thought it had a... Maybe this is a different kind. Maybe they have different kinds of Pro Artes. Thought they had uh, Purloin or some other. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I've wasted a lot of money. I don't know if these are even the, the same Pro Artes that I normally get. Hang on. Let me go look. Okay, so simple task of replacing strings, not so simple because then I discovered that I had this the Pro Arte, but then it's a nylon core and I think the good ones have the purloin or some such thing. The other strings I like are the dominance. Everybody likes them. Uh, but they... Um, and they they're diff they make different kinds. Some of them are aluminum wound, and some of them are silver wound. And who the hell knows? But anyway, I saved. When I find a set that I like, I keep them. So somewhere or another, I somebody told me because there's something about the E string that is inadequate on almost all of these sets. I don't know exactly why. It doesn't make any sense. You'd think they put an adequate one in there. Anyway, so somebody recommended this Pirastro Gold. I guess still a medium. Almost all these strings are mediums. I don't know. Maybe you get a light one if you're just practicing and a heavy one if you're playing concert solo stuff. I don't know. I'm not really sure. If you just go to the store and get violin strings, they're pretty much going to be mediums. Then I tried the helicores, the Dario helicor. Mostly metal. Doesn't not going to work with the violin where you don't have the fine tuner, so forget it. None of the cheap strings are going to work with the violin where you don't have fine tuners because it's all metal and they need fine tuning. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I don't like them, but they're a little bit too metallic. Still settling in. Use my handy dandy phone app. Let's see here. Billion different ways you can tune. I like the phone app. 
because it's always there. Sitting here and turn it this way. Takes a little getting used to turning these pegs enough. When you first put the strings on, when if they go out of tune, they're always going to be flat, they're not going to go sharp. Later in life, when humidities, when the humidity changes or the temperature or something like that, you can actually get a string to go sharp a little bit, but very rarely. this violin that note can be weak so I have to really when I get to it I have to give a little more vibrato a little stronger used to be real weak and then I got somebody I tried it myself a few times not on this violin moving the sound post around I couldn't get it to really change but I took it to a violin guy and um a luthier, a luthier, and got him to move it, and I told him what I wanted, and lo and behold, he says, well, I can make this one a little more lively, he says, but they'll all be a little more lively, so I said, well, do it, go for it. first start playing, lively is a bad thing because <laughs> it's annoying as hell. And you, you think everything that's bad is the violin. And a lot of it is the strings, but so then you go with mellower strings. Oh, I want to mellow things out. And so you go with mellower strings and then you spend a small fortune trying to get a string that matches really your playing ability. The better you get, the more lively you want the strings because you're hitting the notes a little bit better. And you want them to ring out, you know? So there you go. You're going to waste a lot of money on strings, and I'll get into that more as I go along. Oh, by the way, say you just spent $50 on a set of strings. I think these are more like $35, but and the dominance are more like $70 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, you just spent that amount of money on the strings, and the thing that usually happens is the, they become unwound for some reason, the winding breaks, and then you can't play them. Guess what? If you don't cut your fingernails, and right now mine need, need cutting, if you don't cut your fingernails real short, your fingernail is going to rub across that winding and wear it out very quickly. So right now, especially that one, i got to cut these fingernails down before I start wearing out a brand new set of strings. And believe me, if you have long fingernails, you can rip through a set of strings in a week if you're not careful. So. I shall cut this off and cut my fingernails.